Welcome to the second episode of our Trash Mob series, everyone. We get to do some world building this episode, and then we break our format a bit to better show off the system. It was a really fun time all around, so we can't wait to share it with you. But first, announcements. First up, hello everyone from my new microphone. <laughs> uh, my old microphone was on its last legs. You could hear it in our uh, Christmas belonging episode. We had that little snafu, mm. which I'm sure was because of my microphone. I tried to use it for streaming this past weekend, and it did not work. Mm. So just in time, new microphone. Yeah. Um, so thank you to the wonderful one shot, uh, Patreon patrons. Uh, that is how I was able to get it replaced. So, um, for those of you donating, thank you so much for those of you not supporting the Patreon. Uh, you should do that. Yeah. Well, and, and thank you anyway for listening because we I mean, yes, also thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of not already giving to the network Patreon, uh, if you are not and you would like to and you are able to, uh, feel free to check it out uh, over at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. Uh, your support does help all the shows on the network by providing the equipment replacements when needed uh, and, and hosting the shows and other fun little perks. Um, uh, we also get to to have people like uh, Tracy Barnett helping us become better shows and provide more bonus content for everyone through the secret archive. Uh, really, it's a it's a great deal all around, and and honestly, mm -hmm. it helps support uh, some fantastic people. Um, James uh, and Mel and family are uh, just fantastic, and uh, this is James's full time job, so it really it really helps. It's true. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't think we have any other big announcements right now. Um, so let's get back to the conclusion of our character creation series for Trash Mob. Enjoy! episode of Character Creation Cast, Amelia was creating a Yu-Gi-Oh! champion, Melody was creating a bodyguard, and I was playing a pop star undercover, all going to a convention together when our plane went down. We all woke up as various animals, Amelia a dangerous snake, Melody a mighty mouse, and me a majestic goose. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. So we've got all our skills sorted now, and we basically, do we know kind of what we're going to look like? We got a goose, uh, a rat, and a snake. Okay, so the <laughs> there's, <laughs> what? It's just, just these, these everyday, uh, like, small animals. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and the, the knowledge that they're going to become super powerful uh -huh. uh, is amazing. <laughs> Old MacDonald had a farm that conquered the planet. <laughs> um, so the the last step uh, for this pretty much is uh, we're going to we're going to go ahead and then we're not doing any of the optional rules so we can skip that section uh, is your new home. And this decides our setting. Hmm. So. And this and this may make us like look at what we're doing and rethink it. The simplest possibility is that we end up in, you know, the mega dungeon. But but we'll see. So uh, does anybody feel like rolling a die for? I can go for it. Like, do it. We'll we'll see. Cool. I can't be blamed for what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I got a four. You got a four. We are in the barren wastes. Ooh. So where we're at is somewhere that is uh, kind of, you know, not great suited for human life. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of ruins, abandoned colonies, a testament of failure. 
a uh, place where only kind of the strong survive and you're it's a very desperate kind of survival thing. Uh, you know what I think might be fun just maybe because of the season? Maybe our barren waste should be an icy wasteland. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Right. And then it's and then it might be real interesting that you're a snake. Um, I was gonna say, I'm just going to hibernate then, I guess. <laughs> or like. Well, and there's the thing. These are, you know, fantasy creatures, even when they're it's real true. creatures, you know, they're mm-hmm. fantastical in nature to mm-hmm. some degree. So if you're like a snake that is like, say, a snow snake, like it has white scales and it can just, you know, survive in oh, harsh environments. That's so cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's totally a doable thing. Uh, you know, I'll be a, a tiny little um, white mouse of some type and that'll be a. Uh, you know, a thing. Um, and I'm already, I'm already a white goose. So might as well right, be a right, snow right. goose. So, so basically we're all, we're all Arctic adapted creatures. Mm-hmm. Um, now if we were, if we were actually playing the game, which, you know, we're mostly making characters right now and kind of talking through that. So we're the barren waste. Uh, the other thing we would do is we would figure out our starter space. Um, Cause the first place you end up is a safe zone, right? And that safe zone is kind of the place you start. I feel like having a kind of somewhat mysterious, like icy cavern that maybe has, I don't know, like carvings or possibly like little frozen, like little statues of animals and stuff in it. Mm. And then we're just alive there. That might be kind of fun. Almost like, you know, like one of those. Well, how did we get here? Were we just regularly born? No, we just kind of manifested here because yeah. trying to explain how these three animals end up in the same place and don't kill each other immediately. A little tricky. Uh, obviously, a group assumption is, is that while we cannot yet speak to human beings, we can somehow communicate with each other. So I like that. Yeah. So, I, yeah, we'll, we'll end up in a little icy cavern together. And uh, probably after initial freakouts, we would have a bunch of adventures. And that would be kind of the beginning of the game. I like that. I like uh, the thought of this, this cavern being kind of in the middle of a snowy plains or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But like a, a small cave system within it and like uh, an abandoned... Uh, shelter left over from ages ago so like uh there's like you know like discarded gear things that are kind of useless or whatever but like you know maybe there's a a bedroll and maybe there's like uh leftover firewood or something like that right yeah yeah yeah. Uh, how how about as a title the cavern of carved idols does that sound good i like that (laughs) yeah it sounds evocative and so now we've got kind of the idea of our icy barren wastes, and uh, that's that's pretty much it. Like that is initial character creation. From there, it's all just going to go right into the role playing of mm-hmm. who these characters are, what they do when they first realize, oh god, we all died. Oh god, we're these critters. Everything is snow. What do we do? Yeah. Because, like, let's face it, those initial, uh, you know, sort of emotional reactions probably not like you'd have to go through the motions of okay we're alive great and then also the level of we can't just stay here we will starve to death right. <laughs> so and then you but know, you're adventure. like a mouse and i do want to eat you i mean i kind of figured that but I am very <laughs> strong. <laughs> so, okay. That's true. That's true. I mean, there would be at least a small amount of time figuring that out. Yeah, you know, yeah, trying yeah, to come like, to terms with the fact that you look maybe, like food and I'm not allowed I to eat you. Maybe I should eat you. Like, okay, yeah. I hear you, but I no. understand what you're saying, but also I'm really hungry, so... Listen, you know. I, I still have duties from the last life, and I can't protect you if you've eaten me. <laughs> <That's> right? <laughs> Uh, my, I don't think my contract is technically up just because you're a snake now. Uh-huh. So yeah, that's that seems. Listen, this is all I've got left. I'm gonna hang on to my job, okay? <laughs> right. You can't pay um, me anything, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I do notice that the character she has named before, which yep. I spent all that time ag- yeah, agonizing I over, know, but right? also has a new name. New name. Mm. So one of the things is, and this is something I've seen in, in a couple of the anime, is that when you start over in this new life, you don't have a name right out the gate. 
Mm -hmm. Um, But what will happen at some point is either through leveling up or meeting somebody with the ability to do it or having that ability develop on your own, you will get a name. And when you do, that gives you power. Um, (gasps) So when you get your new name... You'll get a level up, and depending on how strong the uh, magic word or what the bonus of whatever level up roll you made, um, that'll kind of give you a uh, sudden bump of ability. That's really cool. Very cool. That's really cool. I like that. I I love that concept of, like, names have power. Uh Uh-huh. Such a good. And then when you get really powerful, you get titles. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um... So it sounds like that's pretty much it for the actual character creation. It is. Um, we now, did it. Now, now, what I was thinking, uh, yeah. tell me if this is too wild. Well, uh, can, we, can we take it up a level now? Take it up a level. Take it up a level. And go through uh, some advancement. That's not the format, right? No, yes, I absolutely. Know. Let's do that. <laughs> we totally Let's absolutely can. do that because that's, I mean, that's a lot of what this game is about oh, yeah. is the growth. Well, so. that growth is also part of how things go. So, like, we obviously don't have time to play a whole game. No. So I have gone to the trouble of kind of giving us a uh, an outline for how that might work. Okay. Mm-hmm. As if events happen. So uh, level one. Uh, And mind you, oh, how this game works when you level. Uh, Levels do not give you specific things. There are a series of charts called the leveling twist charts. And so at every level, you roll to see what kind of leveling twist occurs. Okay. Uh, Doing different things can give you bonuses to this chart roll. So there is rules for grinding. If you've beaten an enemy and taken no damage in the fight, you just go out and start hunting those things over and over again oh. to level your character up. And so if you can do a level grind and if you get the best result for doing it, you will get not only more levels, but you will get stronger levels where you get a oh. higher chance of getting the really good stuff on these charts. So, yeah, that's that's kind of how it goes. And it's sort of supposed to simulate like if you play you know, an out of the box um, like video game or JRPG kind of thing. If you haven't looked at the the strategy guides, you have no idea what kind of abilities you're going to get. Yeah. And so it's kind of the same way where you're suddenly like, I hit level one. What did I get? Oh, I got fireball. That sounds awesome. I hit <laughs> level two. What do I get? You got nothing. Why did I get <laughs> nothing? I wanted something. And then you hit level three and suddenly you get something that's like a small bump to some abilities and you're frustrated. And then you hit level four and you get something really great that you're like, no, no, this is the thing that's going to save all our lives. So it's meant to sort of simulate that. I've done some of the rolls ahead of time just to um, save a lot of thunderous rolling of die fours. So, oh, yeah. Once we've hit level one, uh, apparently what we're going to get is uh, we roll onto the improved chart and we're all getting the resist disease skill. Uh, I don't think I bit us all. So I'm thinking we probably ran into some rodents (laughs) and had to deal with them. Uh, Let's just say ice bats. That sounds pretty evocative. Yeah, Um, that sounds cool. Yeah, ice bat swarm or something. Uh, And because we're multiplayer, we're more likely to hit bigger groups of monsters. That's kind of how things are set up. So uh, so we can add resist disease to our chart of skills as uh, one of the newest things we've got. It is level one. Oh, yeah. So all the skills are uh, level two. So uh, we should put oh. a one by all of these. OK, so sorry, I should have filled that in earlier. But and it's good to have them organized because you will get a lot of these. Mm-hmm. Um. So that's our level one. Level two, I got the improved chart again, and we get plus five levels to a skill of our choice. Um, hmm. Considering what I got. Hmm. Oh, we get five levels in, in we, one we skill? Get, or? We get plus five, and you, you spend it on one skill. You level one oh, thing wow. up by five. And that'll probably bring something you have up to six. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go with. Poison, poison attack here. Oh, there you go. I think I think I'm gonna just keep being a jock and I'm gonna take it up to six on my muscles so that I'm nice. just like, yeah. I yeah, went with get, uh, get real swole. <laughs> I went with six six on my charm. Okay, six on charm. 
Yeah, no, that's a it's a strong skill. It's a good one to level up, to be perfectly yeah. honest. Um, all right, so very charming, very charming. Uh, level three now, and of course, recording your level is also important because having a higher level than something can give you bonus dice to being able to do. Oh yeah. That. Uh, the next thing we get is a skill unlock, a uh, new skill unlock off the basic chart. So Ooh. this is where leveling can kind of get divergent among a group of people. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the suggestions for characters creation is everybody playing the same type of monster. But one thing I found very quickly is nobody ever wants to do that because uh, <laughs> everybody wants to be unique and interesting. Right. So like, you know, your your level yeah. will get a little all over the place, but it's more fun to do different things. So what happens here is if we go back to the uh, new form chart and that's, I believe, page 26, 27, 28, 28. Um, we look at our subtype, so uh, vermin for some of us, domestic animals for other, and we'll mm -hmm. roll a die four to see which uh, of those subcategories we get. Now, if you roll your same type, uh, you get plus one skill to everything you have. Oh, wow. Uh, if you roll something else, you get to pick one of the two skills uh, that they have. So okay. either you're going to diversify what you can do or everything you do is going to get a little better. I, I oh, lovely. rolled a two, so I am getting plus one to what I already got. That's where okay. my uh, leveling has gone. So I roll a four, which is a small humanoid, right? Uh, no, or am I, no, 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 or am no, I only going, looking between in my own category? Yeah, your own category. You're rolling okay. for vermin right now. Okay. So I got a four, which is not what I had before. Right. So slimes, I can't. And that's aberrations. slimes and aberrations. So you can either get the acid attack or you can okay. get the resist bashing skill. Ooh. Okay. Well, I already have poison attack. Yeah. Yeah. Resist bashing might give you some defense if we fight something that's really punchy punchy. That's very true. Yeah, I probably should, even though acid attack sounds cool. I mean, so, you can also be like, no, one day I will be the beholder that is a snake. Like, it, it is entirely. Yeah, I just really yeah. want acid attack. I just want to be just take it. terrible. That's okay. Fun. Thank be terrible. you. Be terrible. Yeah, like, it's fine. <laughs> Ryan's like, whatever stopped you before? Look, <laughs> exactly. Look, I can't just poison things. Now I can also cover them in acid. Uh-huh. I think the thing, this is the thing that I love about making this show, though, is that I know what the smart choice is here. And I get to say, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna go do with this the, anyway. Go with the fun choice. Yeah. Might as right. well. So what'd you get for domestic? I, I rolled a hunting animal. Ooh. Um, so I love that for my goose. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's me, so good. Geese are hunting animals. Let me tell you the uh, the two skills there. Hunter um, is a really good one because the thing it lets you do is that when we start to go to a new area, you get to know what kind of area it is, even if you don't know the specifics. So if we're walking towards enemies, you'll know we're walking towards enemies. And if you're walking mm -hmm. towards like a hazard, you know, it's going to be a hazard ahead of time. Oh, nice. And so it gives you a lot more ability to kind of choose how you're exploring the map. Yeah. Uh, perception, on the other hand, works as a bonus to several different kinds of situations anywhere where senses would be uh, useful. Uh, it also gives you... Um, a counter to movement skills because kind of that anime thing of where like, you know, somebody's moving super speed and the character's just like, I know exactly where you are and just like hits them. Like, mm -hmm. so you can overcome speed with your uh, observation. Oh buildings. yeah. I, I really like Hunter uh, for my goose just because. Oh yeah. It oh, just this. sounds cool. Uh huh. It's strong. It's a good one. Mm. Okay. My goose has a knife now. <laughs> so level four, uh, we get another one of these skill unlocks. That's what came up when I was rolling. So, uh, you know, we, we, we now get to do this again. Oh, do the same thing again. Game. Yep. Same oh, thing I love again. It. Get another, get another fun ability. Like I got a four this time. So I get to choose between acid attack and resist bashing. And uh, because it fits the character, definitely taking resist bashing. Oh, I got rodent. <laughs> So I got disease Ooh. attack or speed. Obviously, disease attack is. Oh, a oh speed God. would be really cool though too. <laughs> <laughs> just, just everything. The snake are, is are, deadly. Are you becoming like a like a, a snake hydra 
Oh man. Of sorts. I don't know. You totally don't can. Know. Like the aesthetics once again can kind of be what you want. I know. So uh yeah, I'm definitely taking resist bashing because uh, you know, bodyguard that seems mm-hmm. smart. That seems mm-hmm. like the right the right idea. So yeah. we do that. So I rolled uh food animal uh for my, my one up here. And you were already a food animal? Yep. So you add Ooh. one to everything you you have already. You are oh, powerful. Oh, so I get uh, all all my stuff gets leveled up. All your stuff gets one added to it. You don't get oh, anything wow. new, but you add one to everything you've got. Oh, that's glorious. Yeah, it's nice. A level two hunter. So we got all of our level four kind of sorted mm-hmm. away. All right. Yep. yep. So uh, level five improved chart. Uh, it just came up. We got a resist. Uh, I randomized it. We got resist devour. So this means we probably ran into some zombies out in the snow. Some sort of, uh, you know, devouring dead monstrosities of one type or another. Yeah. And mind you, once again, aesthetics like, you know, we we might, you know, say there's some other kind of specific thing like, oh, gosh, it's ice ghouls. But, you know, definitely like resist devour is the next thing we got. And that means somebody used it against us. And that's how we got it. So. Mm hmm. So resist devours our next bit. And then uh, there's a little narrative bit here because uh, leveling up isn't just the levels in this. There are other ways you can get skills. So after having dealt with these zombies, my assumption is, is we probably had a rough time of it because they we got a resist out of it, which mm-hmm. means we all got hit. Um, so research is an action you can take. And if you get a four on a research roll, Uh, And it's field research specifically because this would be something like we all go, okay, like two of us can sneak. We're going to go and we're going to like just pop out of the snow and watch these zombies like do their thing for a while. And then we do like a field research to figure out their whole horde tactics thing. And Mm. so now we all get the horde tactics skill. Ooh, uh, I never get that. Yeah, so you would unfortunately in this case it just means you're adding one to it. It's not like oh, a that's huge fine. deal. But but that is, you know, how that goes. Um so we're all getting horde tactics because we studied the zombies to to learn their kung fu basically. Ooh. And um <laughs> ninja zombies. Yeah. And after that, uh we decide to skill grind. Uh skill grinds where you practice a skill to get better at it. OK, um, as long as you're kind of in a safe spot, uh, you can you can pretty much just do that. Uh, I think, again, I mean, you'll still have to make survival rolls every day. So eventually it might kind of become a problem. But mm-hmm. uh, skill grind, uh, in this case, I rolled a three. So we get a plus three and we also get a mystery skill. Oh. So mystery skills will come up and they'll have an unlock condition, right? And so you'll get a mystery skill and then you roll the unlock condition. It can be different things. It could be you need to socialize with somebody. It can be that you need to do some research. In this particular case, it's when we take damage. Now, one of the advantages of being a multiplayer game is there's a very easy way for us all to take damage. <laughs> we can just hit each other. Yeah. So assuming we've, we've I figured did try out, to eat you I, this time. That is entirely possible. <laughs> oh no that's it i can't take it anymore yep uh so uh we all get a plus three to our horde tactics so it goes up three more uh so for two of us that should be about four and one of us it should be at least five yep right. i got uh six for my horde tactic and we get a mystery skill unlock to do so that I was thinking about like having it be a specific and we all get the same, but it'll be probably more fun if we all get to roll and see what we get. Yeah, I like rolling. So, uh, <laughs> taking us, Ryan, I like rolling. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's the surprise factor, right? It's like, it ooh, is. what am going to get? So, um, I just feel so good. Everybody go ahead and roll a uh, D4 for uh, Mystery Skills True Nature. All right. Um, I would say in this case, because we're we're not playing like a long form game, obviously, we're just going through how this works. Uh, reroll results of one. I got a physical unlock because I rolled a four. OK, and I got a two for mine. OK, I think that means you get As a new I. profession. 
Um, so you oh. get to pick a new kind of class. So oh, interesting. that could be a fantasy type job class. You might be like, cool, I'm a mage now. Or you could pick something like, you know, not only did I, you know, sing when I was alive, but I'd also been training to be some some form of job or whatever. Um, oh, my gosh. And then you get to just pick a skill uh, that somehow fits with that new uh, job class unlock. So that's how that kind of works. OK. Oh, goodness. Where where are those? That is uh, the you just make it up like oh. this is one of the okay. things is, is making this game. I abstracted things like mana pools, hit points, etc. Because trying to build an entire game that runs on numbers that are likely in the thousands to ten thousands yes. <laughs> would be insane. <laughs> but I can make a fun little game that die fours that gives you how those things actually play out dramatically when you play the game. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, mm -hmm. you can just pick something that you think really fits with with what you've got going on. And so this would be based on my what I did before. Um, no, you can pick or any now. kind of class. So, like, you've been picking <sighs> tons of damage things. If you were just to be like, you know, uh, sorcerer or warlock or something like that. Mm hmm. I've heard some people are partial to necromancers. I don't know. Mm. Um, <laughs> you could pick that as your job Look, class. Look, I did a lot of killing. I would like to unkill the things that I killed. Well, we've also been fighting a lot of undead. We've been fighting a lot of zombies. Right. I would like to know how to do them. I would like to make my own zombies now. <laughs> Sorbot is fine, but I would like to make my own. So if you want to do that, what I would recommend is take necromancer as a new class you have. Yes. And I would take the summon skill. Ooh. And then we'll assume that what you can summon is one of the undead from the undead chart. Oh, that's amazing. Cool. I, I'm going with, uh, I'm torn between like, uh, you know, a magic user um, or a bard. I think, I, I think my heart's more set on a goose that can shoot fireballs. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm uh, because it's just a just, better visual. It just sounds amazing instead Although of a singing goose. I love goose. the idea of like you know a goose whose honks are magical. You know, mm -hmm. like a magically honking goose, and it's just like <laughs> the dulcet tones of of gooses. Uh, you just like honk out Kelly Clarkson songs or something. You know, yeah, Jesus, <laughs> oh my Thanks God. Oh. And it'll sound just like if I, Amelia, as the person, tried to sing Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I I'm sorry, what did you say my skill should be? Uh, Something undead, summon. sorry. Summon. Summon. Okay. summon, and specifically you would say summon, and you could pick one of the four types of undead from the form chart uh, for yes. what kind of undead you wanted to summon. Oh my gosh, this yeah. makes me so happy. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with uh, Sorcerer. Okay. Um, yeah, like un unlocking a uh, like an in innate like magic power within me. Sure. Um, yeah, your innate goose so powers. So things you could pick, <laughs> you could go to the magic unlock and pick one of the magic abilities off of that chart. Uh, and that's yeah. on page 93. The other thing I might recommend, because you already have charm and... Uh, you know, you, you might get it eventually, but Magic Word lets you speak any language and read any language. And it also mm. gives you the ability to name uh, other people and be able to give them that level boost thing. Oh, now you don't have to, but it is something that seems appropriate for like a. Uh, that know, would be helpful, kind of wouldn't it? it so depends. hear me out. Mm -hmm. I want to do haunted items. Because I feel like that's the closest I can get to my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. That oh, actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I like it. Uh, I got a boring one. I got natural armor. Um, <laughs> so I am just tougher now. Uh, but, you know, for, for style points, I'm, I'm thinking after having been like, you know, nearly eaten so many times. Uh <laughs> They've just okay, developed, are you just like, wearing what? the bones? I would like you to make an armor out of the bones of the things that you've killed. I was actually thinking they literally just have like calcium deposits just erupted <gasps> out of their body and like formed mm. natural armor around them. Also very cool. Yeah. 
<laughs> but maybe Cubone style, at least a hat. You know what? Sure. Why not? Have a little, <laughs> have a little skull cap of some type. Actually, yeah. that does make them a really snazzy minion for your character if they have cool bone armor that they just make happen. So, yeah, I'm going to go with that now. Yeah, they got love bone it, armor. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, I love it. Look at this team. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go with that thing where you can speak any language because that sets me up for, like, future magical shenanigans. It, it uh, Because I, I want to be able to yell fireball yeah and and like uh have my wings like do a you know i don't know a Yu-Gi-Oh or uh not a Yu-Gi-Oh like a dbz sort of uh a dragon ball at somebody i really want your goose to have a magical girl transformation scene at some point though oh wait, absolutely wait, spoilers just wait for it okay and <laughs> okay <laughs> serious, okay sorry seriously though <laughs> okay um, oh my gosh all right, so now we've, we've got all our, our mystery skills in order, right? We've all picked out a fun thing there. Um, so now, now we're getting back to kind of normal levels. Uh, we get plus five uh, to another skill at level six. Um, and at oh, this we get point, plus five to another with one plus already. five, here's the thing. Some of our skills could roll over ten. When you go past 10 in a skill, what happens is, is those extra point you just subtract 10 from it and you get the improved version of that skill. Oh. So, for instance, what I'll probably do right now, because I can, is I will spend my five points on muscle to get it to improved muscle too. Um, nice. Which will make me real, real tough. <laughs> I would probably put that into charm then. If we get five points, you said? Yep, five points. Which puts my charm at, um, gosh, 12? Yeah, which means it turns over to improve charm too. So you Yeah, nice. if I put it in my poison attack, then that's... Yep. So those are all... Because my poison attack's at six plus five is 11, so it's improved poison attack. Yeah. Oh, I like one, it. One, right? Yep. So you'd have okay. improved poison attack. And the thing that that does for you is because it's a new tier, especially on attack skills, you get tier dice. And so your chance of poisoning people and hurting them and it working out goes up. OK, nice. so we've all picked out our next plus five uh, level seven uh, was a was a garbage roll. I'm just going to be honest. Uh, we got another <laughs> resist and this time we got resist poison. Um, oh. now it could be just one of our teammates tried to eat us, but <laughs> if that wasn't I don't know the who case, would do that. if it wasn't what? the case, it probably meant we ran into something that was poisonous. Um, you know, so because, you know, sometimes you don't luck out like that is a really low roll for yeah. that particular chart. Um, so we're all going to get resist poison, which, you know, we got a good deal of resist this game. That doesn't not bad. always happen. No, it really isn't. Cause if you run into it again, you know, mm -hmm. you'll be, yeah. be kind of ready for it. And when it's you, one of those things like you're glad to have it, it's not the most exciting role, but you'll be glad to have it when you need you'll, it. You'll be glad yep. to have it when you need it. And also when it comes to things like when you roll your same form and you suddenly get a plus one to everything or you get an evolution and you get a plus three to everything, mm -hmm. suddenly those start developing into the improved versions and you go, ooh, I'm getting closer and closer to a point where I might just develop immunity to a thing oh, yeah. and no longer get harmed by it. There you um, go. So that's, that's for uh, level seven. Uh, level eight, also a bad roll. We get plus one to a single skill. Oh, yeah, it's not the best. It's not the best. Not going to lie. I th yeah. think if I was to pick a thing right now, I've already got my muscle improved real good. I'm not sure it'll get there, but I'm going to I'm going to pump up my bone armor to two because I like uh, I like the idea of being a little tougher. I'm going to put my regenerate up to two. OK, I'm going to. uh up my magical word Ooh. to two because it sounds like the higher my magical word becomes yeah uh i can start naming people yep so so once i once my magical word hits above our level uh then i can give us all names yeah and that would be that would be really good because that would that uh, would be dope that would give us all a level there's some other hijinks that can be done with it since we're now summoning uh haunted items 
Uh, technically, you can name a summon, and what will happen ah, when you I do that is they become an actual NPC. Yeah, this is like a summon. So, like, you still have your summon skill, but that specific one would become a real NPC, which has the ups and downs of an NPC because they have their own personality. And while they yeah. start off <laughs> friendly to you, you know, things can happen during play. And if they like get gacked, unlike a summon, you don't just like get the gesture and make them come back, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you gotta be a little careful with them. Um,. <laughs> So let's see here. Uh, what levels? That is level eight. We're going to do level mm-hmm. nine. We get another. Oh, now. Now we get to get some real out there uh, character growth. We've got a new category. Now, unlike oh. new skill, this is where we roll a die for to look for a chart that is not ours. And if you get your own chart, just reroll it. Um, so, you know, this is where you branch out and start getting skills out of the other couple categories oh, on there. Cool. So uh, that'll be fun to roll up and see what we get. Um, Three. Oh, undead. Yes. Yeah, oh, you got undead? Psychic. Oh, I'm so thankful that you finally got that. <laughs> All right. I got <laughs> I'm so happy animal. for you. That's, that's fine. We'll see what I get. So then you also have to roll, obviously, the subtype of. Uh, so if, if you get the uh, if you get the dom- so I got domestic animal again. Just, so just I re-roll, re-roll that. It, yeah. All right. Let's see okay. what we get. So I got skeleton. Okay. One of these times I will not roll a two. Oh, I got vermin. OK, I got domestic animal. And then I re-roll, I rolled to get the uh, the subtype and I got familiar, which has magic word and magic boost. Now, technically, none of us have a magic magic ability at this point, but since we already have somebody with magic word, it feels like having magic boost might be more useful down the line. So I think I'll take that. Mm-hmm. So do we do we well, what skills do we get out of this then? Do we pick one of the you, uh, subtypes? Yeah, you you roll once to figure out which your category is and then you roll and you pick one of the subspecies, the, you know, one of the species in it. Um, okay. you take, one of, you take one of the two skills you get from the species. If then this is this is one of those things of each of the the obviously forms has its own unique skill. There's charm, sneak, uh, unliving and humanoid. Mm-hmm. If you have managed to get all the skills out of a subtype and roll yeah. it, you can pick the like top thing out of it. OK, so that's cool. Yeah, like so, for instance, like I have uh, muscle. If I were to have uh, if I had enduring as well for work animal, I could go mm-hmm. and pick charm. And so then I'd be like, you know, a much more charming, tiny rodent. Um, but but I'm not. <laughs> so, you know, right now, my, my little snow mouse. Oh, I could have been a bunny. I should have thought about that. Oh, Being a bunny would have been a billion times. I'm going to go with it. Never mind. I've been a bunny the whole time. That's way more love it. love it the whole time. Yep. That's whole amazing. Time. Never mind anything else that was said. Rabbit. You know what? We uh, we haven't actually played the game, so it doesn't yep, matter. That's right absolutely on. true. We're still technically in character group. <laughs> this is this is absolutely true. That's uh uh-huh. I've heard it's what the podcast is about. <laughs> I know. How did you know? <laughs> so I rolled um vermin and bug for mine. Um, yeah. And uh, one of those is vertical movement. Vertical movement. Which, yeah. And you were like, I want my goose to climb walls. No, I want to be able to fly. Yeah. I've been a Wait. goose this whole time, unable to fly because I've just never figured it out. Yeah. And now you have <gasps> so I've just been running on the ground the whole time, untitled goose game style. Yep. Love it, love it, love it. You just, <laughs> the majestic soaring <laughs> suddenly occurs. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, I'm very happy about that. No, it's good. Yeah, I took scavenge weapon. Ooh. Does my snake have hands? No. No, but does it matter? Once again, back to I aesthetics. don't know. I feel like I'm slowly on my way to like Naga. Once once you get like, to aesthetics, yeah. that's one of those like you know, when I played the tiny pixie, I saw them as a ball of light. They got scavenge weapon, and my thought was, ah, oh, they just telekinetically float the thing and move it around. But there you go. You know, it could be you literally pick something up with your mouth and fight with it if that's what you right. want. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, this snake has a knife or, now. <laughs> or, you know, they just have like a magical hand that's only good for stabbing. <gasps> Actually, we just tape a knife to my snake's tail. And uh-huh. now 
I kind of I kind of love the idea of just the, the snake wrapping around a weapon on one end and using their tail to That's use true. it. That's pretty just great. Yeah, just, just like like using your tail as a whip. Uh-huh. And like Ooh, whipping, whipping a weapon. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. There's the, the possibilities are Su- supersonic really. sword attack. All right. We all we all set amazing. on our skills. Yeah. Yes. Level 10. We got another sad, sad roll. It was on the basic chart. Plus one to one skill. All right. Oh, oh. I know where that's going. Yeah. Uh, magic word. Mm. Mm-hmm. I got to mm-hmm. keep I got to keep pace. Yeah. Um, one of these days we'll get a plus five and. You know what? I might. I think I'm going to throw it into speed, so I can be a little faster. I think that could be useful. Yeah, I'm actually going to put it into sneak. Okay. All right. So another another little story event kind of thing happened here. So after our last uh, fight, we get a level grind in, and mm. we do good on the level grind. And we get a result of power level. And so this makes it so. We got a plus six bonus on the leveling twist chart. So we got our first roll on the master chart at level 11. Oh, and usually you would roll a little lower and get evolution where you go down a couple levels, but you add plus three to every skill you have. It's pretty Mm. good. Instead, it rolled really good and we got new form. And this is where we all get one level of humanoid. So that magical girl transformation. I'm a magic girl. It's time. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, amazing. So that's the first thing we get. We also get more than that, though, because this is one of the, this is not the most powerful level up in the game. There's one above it, but this is like the mid tier one. And we, we jump past the first level to the second one, which is kind of fun. Because you never know quite what you're going to get. So we get the humanoid skill. Yep, we're getting the humanoid skill. The other thing is, is our original four skills. We're adding plus five to all of them. Oh, um, our original four. Holy cow. Yep. So we all have humanoid one. Uh, and that means like um, plus five to whatever your first four skills were. Um, Ooh, I hit uh, I hit 11 on horde tactics. Ooh, well, that means it has now become improved horde tactics one. So, oh, I love it. That is, that is good. And that's Ooh, my original. I'm gonna be four. real sad about these tally marks later, trying to understand what I was doing. <laughs> oh here. yeah, <laughs> like I've been like doing them in different colors for each level, so that I like keep track of like where I got things and everything. But oh yeah, like, oh, I've just been going all in and modifying. Oh no, this is well. See, I'm gonna hold it up, and you're not gonna be able to see it at all. Anyway, oh yeah. So, but it's all there. You like, go. Yeah, it's working. Oh, different yeah. colors. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> I'll clean it up later when I'm done and put it like in the right categories, but. All right. There is one more thing we're going to get to uh, for Ooh. new for the new form, because new form, like I said, it's the mid level one. We get area and area is a skill. It's a kind of modifier skill and you can apply it to one attack skill you have. And if you don't mm. have an attack skill, then you kind of apply it to, um, well, basically to uh, whatever you uh, you get. Well, I think it was, what was the name of it? Weapon area. And that means mm. basically it's for any attack you can do any generic attack, but it isn't for like, you know, actual attack skills. So it's okay. strong and it obviously will get better, though, if you are a humanoid and gain the ability to wield weapons, which we all have now. Um, yeah. Getting those in game means, you know, either beating up other humanoids and taking them or gathering resources and building them. Oh, interesting. So right now I would assume we don't have them. Um, yeah. And I think my one attack skill is a disease attack. Did I get any other attack skills? No. I have improved poison attack, acid attack. You have a bunch of attack skills. You get to pick Disease which one attack. you want to make your area <laughs> apply to. So you would put it in as area and then the name. So I'm going to get area disease. Um, okay, I'm going to put area improved poison attack. Okay. Nice. I'm sorry, area improved poison attack six. Well, the area starts at one. 
And you just need no. to say okay. area poison. It doesn't need to be area. all the words. Yeah, I, I didn't have any uh, attack skills so, before so this. So you would get weapon area, and that pretty much means that uh, you're going to you're gonna be able to do, like, you know, area attacks just by fighting, you know, with your regular oh, nice. ability um, mm-hmm. as a goose. So, uh, you know, just hit people with your wings or or poke them or whatever and now of course once again back to aesthetics you know now we get to all imagine what our characters look like when they hit like a more humanoid form oh yeah and because i find it hysterical because i'm very easily amused uh honey who obviously is you know a bodyguard in her previous life was probably like six foot even you know, and really ripped. She is now only like, you know, like four feet tall, uh, Mm -hmm. wearing bone armor and looking super pissy, but not like actually being very intimidating (laughs) looking at all. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Like you all know better, like, oh, no, she will take your face off. But like, you know, what a cute bunny. Uh Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. (laughs) I love it. And I think I think I'll go for just the, you know, looks basically human, but bunny ears and red eyes kind of deal. Oh, yeah. I like I like the uh, the humanoid with with like small animal features aesthetic. Yeah. Mm. Um, I like snake with arms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> snake with arms. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, gosh, I want to go uh, humanoid, but like I gain arms. But like my wings go to my back. Yeah. No, that's totally Oh, you tuck your wings back yep. and then like Yeah, so yeah, so my, my wings become uh, so I look more angelic with like a slightly goose head. Right. Yep. Angelic, but actually you're a goose, so it's demonic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right. I mean and, and this is the thing, like there's still more levels and evolutions to go. So like, you know, this could be a progression. I'm deciding on like going a little bit more full humanoid right now, but I could do more of like a, an anthropomorphic thing, you know, where it's like mm-hmm. and then that bunny mm-hmm. stood up and cracked their knuckles and everybody went, well, How did that happen? I have hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These hands mean business. Uh-huh. So we got a few more level ups. Everybody got that all sorted out? Absolutely. Awesome. So the last two levels we got out of that power level, we get two more plus fives. And since we got them all. Oh, at wow. Once, it's basically, you know, five to ten points. We can we can spread around how we want for uh, kind of oh. shoring up our, our new new improved forms and such. Um, improved magic word. Mm-hmm. Level three. Um, So it feels like I can give people names now. Uh, is it what it's what? Oh, it's improved three. You could. Yeah. We could literally go to 14. And if we wanted to, like, kind of roll one of these, quote unquote, honestly, we could totally do that if let's, you'd like to. Let's do it. OK, let's do it. All right. So. uh, All right. So our last. uh, What and what? um, Well, let's, let's make sure we're all squared away. I. Yeah, I added. uh five to uh speed and disease attack so now i've got improved disease attack improved speed and improved muscle so that's going to be a a nice even spread of of attack bonus and uh defense all over the place for right now so it's going to be pretty good yeah i put mine into sneak and regenerate so that they're both improved okay cool so so oh nice you got not only a necromancer thing but almost like an assassin vibe kind of starting to yeah i like that i will kill you and then undo it (laughs) (laughs) but then you'll be friendly to me right so uh uh, then the next level we'll, we'll try and roll up for reels here uh how it actually go in the game uh yeah so you you hit us with magic word and it's improved. Yeah. So that means there would be a plus two bonus for this uh, level 14. We rolled Ooh. it. Uh, it's off. We just had the improved chart. And every time you roll a chart, it'll either it may have a bonus for your next roll. Uh, mm-hmm. In particular, with this, we'll have a plus four bonus to our roll. Uh, oh, wow. Does somebody want to roll three die four plus four? If anybody Ooh. wants to do that. I can. Okay. Yeah, Sounds go for good. it. Well, actually, let's see here. I'd have to seek out my D4s. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see who gets it faster. Two, and where's the third one here? Come on. Oh, no, it's at the bottom. 
I can't find hairs. another four. Got four somewhere. Ah, I got it. No. 3D4. Ha ha. Ah, you beat me. <laughs> Let's see. I got two, two, and uh, what does this one say? Three. Two, two, and three. So that's seven plus so four. Yeah. And we get 11. That puts us on the greater chart. Okay. So we'll be rolling on the greater chart and seeing what we get from mm. it. Uh, and now we need to do three die four plus four again for the greater chart to see what we get. All right. These are so hard to pick big up. Money, too. Big money, big money. No whammy, no whammy. I know. All right. I got four, four, one. So that is eight, nine plus four is 13. Ooh. Oh, you just hit the highest thing on the greater chart which is evolution <laughs> so now not Ooh. only have we gotten new form but we're also going to get evolution so uh evolution is pretty straightforward we're going to drop by five levels so we are now level nine but at that uh level nine uh what we're getting is plus three to all the skills we have wow so and oh also, boy. that's a time where I go like, you know, evolutions, this, this gets into that whole aesthetic level thing. Like, maybe I did look like, you know, more of an anthro bunny, but then suddenly the evolution hits and it's like, oh, no, now I look like, you know, death doom bunny made of like, you know, all kinds of crazy bone spikes and stuff. And yeah. I'm going to see what that looks like when I've got all my skills up by three, because I don't think it does too much for me, but, you know got to look so i've got i've got three skills at 10 yep i needed to get to 11 to get improved right to, to get another rank up yeah they gotta get yeah there. so those are kind of nice. just hovering but oh they're so close it is kind of gratifying to see all of the resists suddenly jumping up going oh one day you might be improved it could happen <laughs> Did anybody get anything interesting out of that? I didn't get anything that rolled over at that point for me. No, personally. nothing. No. Uh, nothing that rolled over. No. Uh, but my 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 three improves, my improved charm, my improved horde tactics, and improved magic word have gone up a bit. Yep. Um, and my improved charm is at level ten, um, along with scavenger and grazer and uh, metabolize. Oh, that's good. Um. Yeah, I, I, my sneak and my muscle are both sitting at 10. So I'm like one step away from getting greater muscle. <laughs> oh, nice. Because, you know, I need to, I need to get stronger. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, that's kind of how that goes. Um, if we were to have, you know, if we were to go into the more advanced levels, which you know, it takes a while. Eventually you get things called uh, crown skills. Um, yeah. And you get apex. Uh, apex is basically when you when you finally get this role, it's on the uh, ultimate, I believe, chart. Mm -hmm. When you get apex predator, uh, you get a cool title, you know, uh, of some type. And you get an extra level just on the spot with a big bonus to it. Uh, you gain a level of the Apex skill, and what that'll do for you is uh, it lets you start rolling extra dice just on top. Normally, you get capped mm. at rolling four die four and then taking the highest. Uh, Apex, then you could technically, as long as your bonuses get you up to a die pool high enough, roll five die four and take the highest. Oh, wow. So it starts kind of tilting uh, the level of power you can put out. And you also get the crown skills. And the crown skills are the things that are like sort of the capstones that lead you to being that OP god level on things. OK, if I were to if we were to actually have hit that level, which would probably not happen until like level 30 or later. But, you know, just show character creation. Um, I would yeah. probably like think that out of our group most likely um well our uh our lovely snake with every attack skill <laughs> probably should take the crown of destruction oh. because it gives you just flat boost to attack dice Ooh, that does sound fun. and uh mm -hmm. greater it'd give you a bonus for fire magic which you don't have at this time but you might by then 
Uh, and then the ultimate for it is that uh, your tax can, like, destroy things permanently, uh, including, mm. like, objects, locations, creatures. Like, if you kill somebody with it, they cannot be resurrected. That's it. They're they're gone. And additionally, you can do a thing where if you attack the zone you're in and there's nothing there to challenge you, you can turn it into a uh, destruction hazard zone. So it's almost like you just looked at that area and you went, you know what this gonna, place is going to be? Eternal Hellfire. And pff, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> like, Oh, amazing. So... Uh, as far as like the rest of us, I'm not 100 percent sure on our singer because there's a lot of ways that could go. Like, obviously, they're going to yeah. talk probably Crown of Command. Um, I was looking at that yeah, one. It gives you a boost to socializing. Uh, you get the frost magic, which you don't have now, but you could. And then eventually it becomes mm -hmm. this whole thing of you start becoming like, well, I met an intelligent monster settlement and their first instinct is. Well, we're going to work with you now because you're obviously powerful enough to lead. Um, <laughs> and if you have like possession, you're able to like perma possess people and your charm skill starts getting really gross, too. So for a very right. social character, that's like kind of the kingmaker crown, like the one where mm -hmm. it's like, nope, I'm going to build an army. Uh, and yeah. I think for playing the bodyguard, I would have probably took the crown of imperviousness, uh, just giving mm -hmm. a big boost to defense counter magic and then eventually be able to create safe places and also oh. you could put your safety onto somebody and if they get okay. hit it's as if you're getting hit instead mm. so literally would be the like ultimate that. bodyguard at that point like nope you can't hurt them why because you got to kill me to kill them oh yeah now uh Crown of Command is cool, yeah. but for a goose, uh -huh. uh, I'm going to posit Crown of Movement. Oh, God. I mean, <laughs> if you want to basically be kind of like the Flash where you just get lots of extra uh -huh. moves and you're all over the place. Yeah. Moving at lightning oh, speed. Yeah. 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 Uh, lightning, lightning yep. magic. Uh, the crap out of things. I'm, I'm all for yeah. that. No, Crown of Movement would be a good uh, pick. Oh, goodness. I, I just want a chaotic goose that just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is your alignment uh, there's, chaotic there's, goose yep chaotic goose <laughs> that's what oh, D, D needs I know, it's like right? goose not goose <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite of goose oh goodness that's amazing I, I, I love seeing like even uh, we went through what like 14 levels mm -hmm. uh, give or yep. take and mm -hmm. um we and I mean a snake that's also a necromancer. <laughs> yeah, a necromancer snake. <laughs> but also um, still technically a Yu-Gi-Oh! champion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just so obvious. That so opens up those future weird opportunities where it's like, they're all like, oh God, we're all terrified of the necromancer and somebody gets out some cards and they're like, all right, you get to live today. Shuffle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. I, I have not uh -huh. played in forever. Please. <laughs> I love the lo cards. I love the thought of like eventually your character getting so powerful that you can summon cards like as monsters. Um mm -hmm. but, and and like and call it out time for my blue eyes white dragon to enter the battlefield. It would be amazing. Be so totally good. Doable. It would be amazing. You activated oh. my trap card. There's a set <laughs> trap skill. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> this is the, this has been really fun. I I, I really enjoy this. I, I can't this wait to good. can't wait to discuss this further in the next episode. But my goodness, uh, oh, one thing we never did. What what what? We we didn't define our names You're that right. that my magic bird gave everybody. Okay, but 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 I think that that would be great to do in our fan fiction section. Ooh, we can let's talk do that. about why we have those names. I like it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, mystery uh, name coming in the uh, fanfish section of our discussion. So stay tuned for that, everybody. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Very good. Well, thank you so much for joining us to discuss Trash Mob character creation. This was so much fun. Absolutely. Oh, this is a great time. Um, do you want to remind people where they can find you online? Sure. Uh, so look up Mother Multiverse uh, Media on itch or on uh, you can you can find me on Twitter as well, but I won't be able to do as much for you there. But if you go to 
If you go to it, that's where the <laughs> game actually is. Uh, and yeah, those those are my main kind of stomping grounds right now. Wonderful. Uh, well, thank you, Melody, for being here. Uh, thank you for joining us. And thank you to everybody for listening. Uh, please join us on the next episode for our discussion block. Call to action. Yeah, like that. I really enjoyed the leveling up in this in this mm. game. I know that we don't normally do it till the end, um, but I scribbled all over my sheet in different colors for every level that we were doing, <laughs> and by the end, it was a beautiful rainbow. Yeah. Um, I, I like when every level has something, you mm. know? Yeah, like even the even the little levels, there was like a, like a lot of, you know, quote unquote, uh, we just got this one little boost thing, but like, Mm-hmm. You know, it was it was still a boost. It wasn't just a hey, you leveled up, you gained some HP. Yeah, and I think it made a difference to the story. Exactly. Yeah, and it's really cool because like everything that you level into, it feels like uh, has that narrative hook to it, which is really nice. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, definitely. Um, before we let you go for the week, we have just a couple calls to action as usual. Mm-hmm. Uh, one big reminder is to check out the One Shot Network Patreon. If you haven't yet at patreon.com slash one shot podcast, there are a lot of great benefits for joining. But the secret archive is probably one of the best parts uh, where you get bonus content from shows all across the network, including ours. Uh, It also goes to a great cause, like getting a new microphone for Amelia after the old one was on its last leg. Yep, definitely needed it. I'm glad that we didn't have to, like, have any ruined series or, you know, be totally without one or anything like that. So just in time, in the nick of time. I'm really really happy that we have it uh, before the next recording as well, which is really nice. Definitely. Another thing that you can do to help our show specifically is leave a rating or review on services like Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, other ones. If we find your five-star review, we will read it out loud and say thank you on the show. We really love reading reviews. They make us feel so good. They're they're truly like we I know we always say it, but like we really do get excited about it. Yeah. Um, they definitely make a difference to our days, especially in these rough times. Mm-hmm. Um, and they kind of fuel us to keep doing the show and remind us that like people love what we're doing. So it's always a good feeling. Um, we are out of reviews right now, so we would really love some more. Absolutely. Um, I just left a review uh, for Pandas Talking Games uh, on my podcast addict this morning. Uh, it took like two minutes. Nice. Nice. Uh, it's it's really easy to do. So if you're a podcast addict uh, listener uh, on Android, I believe that's all that there is. Um, you know, it's super easy to just go in there and leave a review. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can even rate episodes with thumbs up and thumbs down now and there, which is really oh, neat. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, so th- that's something to keep an eye out for. And if you're a Spotify listener, uh, you can go to Spotify on the app and rate us there as well if you want. I don't think they have comments or reviews yet, uh, but you can at least throw a rating out there. That'd be pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, that's it for our calls to action, though. We are thrilled to have you here with us during your week. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, stay safe, drink some water, get vaccinated, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs, 
and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like System Mastery. System Mastery is a delightful stroll through the history of role-playing games. Except the games are terrible, and the hosts are real jerks about everything. Join hosts Jeff and John as they explore the weirdest games ever made to talk about what worked, what went wrong, and which silver hawk was the best. It was Hot Wing, don't even add us. Find their shows at systemmasterypodcast.com or oneshotpodcast.com. Finally.